We're going to continue on here tonight with our race winning driver, Joey Logano, driver of the number 22 Team Penske Ford. If you have a question for Joey, please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We will start with Jenna, make our way around the room. Hey, Joey. Um, one of the first things you said was when it's playoff time, it's our time. Um, wh wh what gives you that confidence? What makes you so certain that when, when this t time of the season hits that, that you're going to step it up a notch? It just seems like we do it. We just do. Um, you know, more times than not, excluding last year, really, um, we, we've been able to level up when we need to level up. And um, to be able to, to fire off, you know, your first race to the playoffs and with a statement win, um, it's key, right? I mean, we all talked about how wild card this round could be. Um, and we knew that the Penske cars would be strong on, on the super speedway style type racetracks. Um, we've been all year long, and unfortunately, we've been getting caught up in every possible wreck on these type of tracks. So it's nice to finally capitalize on the laps led and being towards the front um, and having a, a teammate lined up behind me there. And, and he scored a ton of points today, too, uh, being up there. So a good day for, for Team Penske all the way through. Yeah, Cindric did, too. So um, a really special uh, day for Penske to, to be able to score some good points and um, set themselves up all pretty good for round the 12th. Okay, let's go next to Jeff Gluck. Um, how different is that situation for you as the leader if it's not a teammate behind you? Is it is it a completely different thought process? I probably still choose the bottom lane. Um, there's definitely things could have looked differently. Um, I think we still would have been in pretty good shape. I have to go back and really rewatch it to, to know for sure. But uh, the push he gave me down the front stretch, taking the white, was was a key move uh, to be able to do that. And um, yeah, so I think that was a, a big help. That was probably the biggest help of the whole thing. But um, you know, Blaney has been a, a fantastic teammate. We've worked together for for years now, um, and it's nice when we you know for so many years we've talked about a lot of scenarios. We've been through a lot of different scenarios at the end of these races. And uh, you know, some of them we've done really well, like today. And sometimes we've messed up and uh, on both of us, right? So um, the good thing is that we were able to talk about it all the time um, you know, and, and, and be able to get better. And, and that's just really what, what you want in a teammate um, out there. So um, you know, it goes back and forth. And, and sometimes you're the one in victory lane, and sometimes you're not. Um, luckily, today, we were in the right spot. And then even with him behind you, when you have teammates lined up to your outside and know that they're going to stick together no matter what, is there anything that you can do to counter that aside from just trying to make sure that you're staying connected to Ryan as much as possible? Like, how do you how do you approach that mentally? Yeah, I mean, there's it, a lot of prep and, and a lot that goes into making sure that you get the push at the right time. And, and um, you know, the, the part that concerned me a little bit is they attached a little better than us on the outside lane. And um, we were able to stay attached good down the back stretch, which was able to push me clear just barely, um, really only because the one, I think the one got loose there. So um, if it wasn't for that, it, it, we would have been side by side. And I don't know if it would have looked the same. So um, they did a good job executing that. And I, and I knew that, you know, the, the one difference there is you had their car that was in the playoffs in the front. So you knew Ross was just not going to make the move. Um, so there's definitely a, a little bit more. Um, I don't know what you want to call it, commitment there, I guess, because you have one card that, that really matters if they win. And for both of me and Ryan, the win was huge uh, for both of us. So it, that changes the game a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, they did a good job up there, too. Let's go next to Jordan Bianchi. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, on the radio, it said, let's do the plan we talked about on the bus. So what is that plan you guys talked about on the bus? I can't tell you all. I'm like, yeah, see, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Nothing against you. I just wouldn't tell anybody. Um, like I said, we go over a lot of stuff together. Uh, we prep a lot together, um, separately and together sometimes. And um, like I said, this speedway racing these days is uh, it's just so interesting. And, and every track's a little bit different. Daytona to Talladega to Atlanta all are, are kind of a breed of their own. Um, and 
when you have fast cars like we do right now on these speedways, it's important for us to capitalize as a team. Um, these are our bread and butter uh, right now. So um, we've proven that really over the last year plus um, that, that this is our type of racetrack. So, you know, to be able to make sure that a Penske car wins is very important for our organization right now. Coming into that restart, you know you got Blaney behind you. You guys are so good at this kind of racing. Do you feel like this is your race to win or lose, and like the, the, all the advantages now on your side? I did. You know, I really felt like when we were in the lead, coming to take the white, and the caution came out when we were up top there, and I had them side by side behind me. At that point, I said, "Man, I, I really think I got it. Got it. Won." At that point, I thought everything was going to go pretty good. The next lap, I just had to keep them too wide for another lap. Um, so I felt pretty good about that. And when the caution came out, I was kind of like, ah, your restarts just, uh, things change. Fuel wasn't really much in there. <laughs> so uh, it, was, it was fairly empty. So uh, it all ended up working out. But, um, you know, you start getting restart after, you know, another green-white checker, and all of a sudden you're out of gas. And you have a day that looks like you can win or score a ton of points to running out of gas could be, you know, that, that quick. So um, taking the white was key for us just to, you know, but this is a base hit type of race, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, there's a point there is like, you know, you take a fifth out of today and you feel pretty good about it. Um, I feel much better about taking a win, but that's just kind of what this, this racetrack's about. Let's go next to Jacob Seelman. Okay, I, uh, go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. Okay. It's okay. Mark Carroll, Pierre, and Joey, can you talk about the range of emotions? You're, no, you're knocked out a year ago in round one, and this year you come back and you guarantee in the first race of round one you're going to round two. What, what is that like emotionally? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I move on pretty quick. Um, you know, to be honest with you, the, the – when we got knocked out of the playoffs last year, it hurt a lot, um, and it stings the rest of the playoffs. Every time you show up to the racetrack and you're not in it, it hurts. Um, it's really frustrating, and you know you just get mad. You just live mad for a little bit. Um, but that's just what the playoffs are, right? I mean, it, this, that's what drives you and motivates you to to be better, and because um, you don't want the pain, <laughs> and and you also want the thrill of the victory at the end. But um, this is a good start for sure. Jacob Seelman, Race Face Digital. Joey, two for you first. Uh, Kyle Petty on the NBC Post Race Show called you a, a big game, big moment driver. And Paul, when he was in here a few minutes ago, said a lot of that uh, comes back to your mental game. What What is it, if you can pinpoint something specifically in you, in your driving style, just lets you continue to step up in these big, big moment, big pressure situations? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly what it is. I think some people are kind of born a certain way and like a very competitive people. And um, there's times that that bites me as much as it helps me. Uh, but yeah, I feel like um, there's just, for whatever reason, always another gear in there. Um, and I try to reach it every race, <laughs> but it just seems like the playoffs uh, uh, seem to, to work for, for us as a team. I mean, I wouldn't say it's just me. I mean, our, our whole team really does a good job at, at thriving in these scenarios. And, you know, I talked a little bit earlier today about, you know, their their work ethic, um, their experience level uh, of this race team. When we go into the playoffs, it, it doesn't really affect us much, right? And sometimes pressure can either make you crack and fall apart or it's going to make you better, um, right? And... For us, it, it seems like with the experience that we have and the been there, done that, um, we, we just kind of know how to, to handle it. So um, there's a long ways to go in this playoffs. It's, it's you know, I don't want to get stuck on saying, man, we won the first one and it's going to be a cake from, cake from here. It's not going to be easy from here. This is just the ability to, to breathe for two weeks. <laughs> so we, you know, try to get some playoff points. And I know you mentioned it on the TV broadcast, so I wanted to ask you, uh, I know you had the kids crew here today and how big that was. What have you done around this weekend as far as with your foundation and, and what was that experience like finally being able to have them celebrate with you in Victory Lane? Yeah, it was a, a very special week um, for a lot of reasons. Um, I got to go to the Shaw Air Force Base uh, on 
what was it, Friday afternoon, um, and drove down there with my, my wife and um, friends of ours there that, that I got to meet or, or getting deployed, and they have a ball. Uh, so I got to go down there and talk to them um, and have a lot of relationships there. And, and so it was really cool to, to do that. Um, that was kind of the, the first special thing that happened. And I got here, I think it was midnight by the time I landed here on, on Friday night. Um, and, and they told me to go win, so I'm glad I at least held up that end of the bargain. Uh, and then the JL Kids crew are the kids that, that have really been through a lot in their lives. Um, they're huge race fans, um, particularly 22 fans. <laughs> um, and, and these kids have been through more than, than you can ever imagine. Um, and a lot of it, th that whole program started from a little guy named Jake Leatherman. Um, and he passed away, unfortunately. We met um, his family and went to his funeral. Uh, and, and all that, there was amazing, I, I wish you guys, maybe someone, some of you guys here actually were there at that funeral that day, um, but there was a ton of race team guys that showed up in their race suits. And because um, he was a little kid, but he was a huge race fan, we all showed up there. And I thought, what a, what a shame. Um, and I left there kind of mad because we didn't meet him when he was with us. Uh, and that's where the JL Kids Crew started years ago. And uh, we've been giving these amazing experiences to these kids. And unfortunately, I never made it happen on, on the racetrack when they were here. So uh, to see them celebrating together uh, in Victory Lane, um, that was really neat. So they told me I better win. It was quite the threat. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, that worked out. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, Steve Hummer from the Atlanta General Constitution. Uh, two part question. First of all, when you, when you come onto this property every time, given your long history, is there one fond memory that, that always strikes you first? There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of memories here. More memories at this racetrack than anywhere I've ever been. But I always remember probably the first time pulling in here is in 99. And we were moving from Connecticut and trying to figure out where we wanted to live. And we drove by Atlanta Motor Speedway and we almost pulled in. And um, I remember we drove in and, and all of us were we were in a motorhome just traveling across the country figuring this whole thing out and uh we walked we drove through the tunnel like oh my god <laughs> like look at this, this place is incredible we've never been to a track like this before um at the time i was racing quarter midgets and, and um we met ken reagan david reagan's yeah. dad um here at legends of georgia and uh i said why don't you race a bandolero tonight no it's just <laughs> like okay sure we'll race tonight <laughs> and that's just the way we did it and uh we ran the race and um, we ended up buying the car and <laughs> said, we'll be back. And we moved down here, I don't know, maybe six months later, the car was still sitting in the shed. And I started racing here. And those memories uh, with, with my parents and my sister, and um, there's a lot of, there's more stories than, than I can mention here. Um, but it, it, uh, the dream of driving on that quarter mile and always thinking, I just want to go straight one day and get on the big track. That's what I always wanted to do. And, um, Pulling into Victory Lane here is obviously uh, one of the most special things um, to, to really put all that together. So definitely a lot of fun stories. We've been thrown out of here a few times, um, but they can't throw me out today. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. And, and where did, I don't know, ranking is not really the right question, but uh, this is, I guess, another special chapter in the memories you have of this place. I don't know how, how, how you're going to uh, file this away. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's um, I'd say the first time I've won here was, was probably the most special one last year. And, um, and my dad being here and we celebrated on Victory Lane you know, or, or in a French straightaway together, that was a really cool moment. Um, this is, there's just a lot of moments on the start finish line here before. My, my favorites, I'll tell you a fun story because you're asking for stories. We came here, this was years ago. Uh, Roush gave me a cup car to go make laps in. This is before I signed with Gibbs. This was back in 2004. I was 14. And we would just go make laps at local short tracks uh, just, just for fun. And we'd go testing with Mark Martin. And it was like the coolest thing in the world. And a friend of ours was testing a, a Porsche for the um, Rolex 24 and was running the road course here to test. And we said, hey, could, do you mind if we make some laps while you're not on the road course? Said, Absolutely, no problem. So we called uh, Ed Clark at the time, he was running the track. And was like, hey, you know, we make some laps. And I'm like, yeah, sure. They thought we were racing Legends cars, because at the time I was racing Legends cars, they thought I was going to run laps on the quarter mile. They're like, sure, OK. Well, then we unloaded a cup car. And they didn't like that. That wasn't too cool in, the, in their book. And um, they gave me this lap time that I couldn't exceed. And it was a very slow lap time. So I'd run a fast corner, and that's it. And I always remember it was right before lunch, and my dad goes, screw it, Joe. Just go. They're going to throw us out. 
I don't care. Just go. They're going to black flag it. Just go until it runs out of gas. <laughs> so this is how we, I grew up. <laughs> it explains a lot for you guys, just so you know. Um, so I did that. We got thrown out, and um, but it was a really cool memory. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> I was 14. We were ripping, too. It was, it was fun. It was really cool. We're going to come up. Yeah, 805. Uh, we had a race shop down the road from here, um, and was uh, our late model was there. Um, Jim Gresham owned our, our late model. I drove for him, and uh, his uh, grandkid raced, and he, uh, he raced too, and so we stored all our stuff there, and uh, so we lived here a lot, because my our house was actually in Alpharetta, but that's, you know, an hour plus from here, um, so we stayed here a lot. There was, yeah, but me and my dad were here 90% of the time, so it was, uh, yeah, it just ended up being being here. There was plenty of times after a race, I remember, you know, it, the memories just like flood, flood, come flooding back to you, but to see the the, the post-race interviews like this, we'd be watching it from the, the whatever closed network cameras uh, up in the condos afterwards. It's cool sitting here thinking about that. Maybe someone up there is watching right now. Kind of cool. All right, we're going to come up to Bob in the middle front here, and then we're going to go back to Doug and then to Jerry. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Uh, do you consider this a super speedway, and do your feelings about super speedway racing that have been pretty frustrating, Any does this alleviate any of them? Yeah, I mean, I consider it a super speedway. Um, it, it, it's a pretty unique one because um, it, it can kind of, sometimes you can think it's more like the old 550 days where you lift a lot more than normal. Um, but, I mean, it, there's a super speed, I mean, I mean you know, a super speedway racing is a lot of fun until it's not. Like, it's, it's actually really entertaining, and even from inside the car, it's just the chess match that it is there. Um, and trying to outsmart your competitors is really fun until you just wreck. And then you're like, man, this sucks. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't, there's no better way of saying it, right? It's just great until it's not, um, which uh, it seemed like today there wasn't really any big pile ups, which was nice. There's a little bit more separation in the field here, but it's, uh, it's intense out there for sure. I mean, it's, there's not a moment through those 400 miles where you just go, <sighs> all right, and take a break. I mean, it's just crazy the whole time. Go ahead, Doug. Hey, thank you very much. Joey, Doug Turnbull for PRN and 5 to Go Podcast. So congratulations on the win. That one thing, I was up in turn two watching, and we were expecting the whole time, to the naked eye, it didn't look like handling was as big of a deal as it probably felt in the car. We were so surprised on the whole broadcast that people were able to stick it and maintain position three wide middle. So was the handling much more than what it looked like to the naked eye? Or maybe were you surprised how much grip the field was able to have? Or was it because of fuel saving that you were able to stay so tight in the pack? Yeah, there's times the leaders were saving fuel, which keeps the pack a lot tighter. And you kind of have a pace a half a second or so slower a lap. That just allows everyone to stay tight. Um, you know, the teams keep making their cars better. Right, that's that's part of it. I remember the first time we came here, it was very separated because everyone was out of control. Um, but the teams are getting smarter. The cars are all driving better. Um, I, I, there's a lot of moving around out there. Yeah, I mean, for to say handling great, it's not quite the case. There's quite a bit of lifting moments and cars sliding up the racetrack. And um, you know, I even made a mistake at the end of the second stage and got into 38 and didn't mean to. I just the nose takes off and poof, you know, it just goes and um, just wild the. Uh, it's it's incredible we don't wreck more than we do. I, I can tell you that much. It's it's absolutely amazing how good everybody is. Because <laughs> if you see it from my view, which you guys get to you get in car camera, but it's different when you're actually in the car and you see it happening because it's it's real <laughs> for for me. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's surprising a lot that we make it to the end. Go ahead, Jerry. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires out net. On those closing laps there, were you ex anticipating a crash before the white? Uh, and when it came out, uh, what were your thoughts? And I have a follow-up. Um, you never really anticipate a, a wreck. Um, you know, we, we got pretty far down into the, the very end of that race. So you think, OK, I mean, we're, we're looking pretty, you know, coming to the white flag. We're looking like we are you know, may finish this thing. So you race as if you're going to go to the end. Um, so I wasn't, but I'm also not surprised that the caution come out, you know, I mean, it, it's just, that's what happens at the end of these races more times than not. Um, 
I was just glad there wasn't another one. I don't think we had many more of it in the tank. And follow up, you punched your ticket to the next round. You know, um, you're, you're, you moved on. That's that's what all this is about. Your thoughts on uh, on advancing and, and you know setting yourself up for the rest of the playoffs. It, it's a it's a good start. There's a long ways to go. Like I said, um, the the five playoff points are really nice. That's going to help us through the next couple rounds. Um, but there's a lot of racing ahead of us and a lot lot more to do. So uh, it's a good start, but a long ways to go. Go next to Deb Williams. Deb Williams, Auto Week. Uh, Joy, congratulations. When you lined up for that final restart, was that Coleman that came on the radio and said his study had shown that you needed to take the inside lane? Yeah, Coleman and I go through a lot of stuff. Coleman um, does a fantastic job at understanding the draft. He's, uh, he's the best on the roof, there's no doubt about it. Um, and, and he's also the best for me because we have a great relationship, right? Coleman, Coleman's the best man at my wedding, right? So like, we, we, have, we know each other really, really well um, off the racetrack um, as much as we do on the racetrack. So naturally, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot during the week about what we're going to do in, in those scenarios. And um, I trust his studying sometimes even more than my studying <laughs> when, we, when we get back and, and talk about it together. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he's a great racer, right? And it's just, he gets it, he understands it. And, uh, he tells me what I need to hear. And, um, not just from a, a racing perspective that, you know, what lanes are moving and those type of things, but also what, what makes me tick and where, where he knows where my head is at <laughs> sometimes <laughs> he needs to straighten me up sometimes. So, uh, it's, it's nice to have a friend up there, uh, that, that's able to help guide you. So does he study video or the, the track or what all does he study? I don't think these days most people use SMT uh, to be able to study a lot. But I mean, there's, there's videos as well. Um, pretty much any resource that we have is, is what we, we try to go through. But um, yeah, Coleman, he just gets it. He gets the strategy, he gets the racing side. Uh, he was a great driver, really. I mean, he was right on the verge of making it himself as a driver. So, you know, I think, um, you know, anytime you can have that, that trust and that experience on the roof, that's a, a no-brainer. It took me years to to uh, want to do that because I didn't want to ruin a friendship because that meant more to me than than uh, what we do on the racetrack because um, I, I don't think you can ask for a better friend. Um, so it took a while to to come up with the guts of, of risking that, but uh, sure glad we did. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we're gonna go next to John Newby. John Newby, Alt Driver. So obviously winning's fun. But I was talking to Christopher Bell on pit road after the race, and he was talking about how you guys needed to celebrate this race, and it's the most fun he's ever had in a super speedway. Does that, I guess, surprise you that someone can be sad about losing but still had so much of a blast during this race? I think people like racing. Like, I mean, we all do this because we like racing. Like, we like to drive fast. Um, I enjoy it for the most part, but... Uh, I, to, for me, honestly, I don't do this for fun. <laughs> like, I, I do it to win. Like, we do it to 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 make money, right? Like, that's that's what we do it to put championships and get trophies. Like, that's that's why we do it. Um, but I, I will say that the reason why we all started is because we like to go fast. We like to compete against each other and race. And um, you know that 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 part is is always down in your heart. Um, you know, I mean. It, it's no different when I get home during the week. The the one thing I want to do uh, is go ride my quad, right, or go go <laughs> race go karts. Like we still enjoy that, you know. It's still fun to, to have that down in your heart. It, nothing's changed since I was a kid. Um, that you still end up liking this stuff a lot. Okay, we're gonna go to the back right here, and then we're gonna have time for two more. We're gonna go to Michael Massey, and then we're gonna finish with Jeff Gluck. Uh, yeah, Alfred Romero, uh, Southern Race Week Radio. For, uh, two part question. Number one, do you do anything slow? And then number two, uh, talking about the memories here of racing and Ken Reagan and your your condo here. Have you ever had an inkling or an urge to maybe go up there and uh, maybe uh, knock on the door and say, "Hey, would you mind if I kind of like kind of check the place out, see what's changed?" And what's you know, I really want to do that. Um, and I've I've thought about it a lot to go up there and, and just knock on the door. And I always thought it was kind of weird to do, like. If someone just knocked on your door like, hey, I used to live here. Can I see what it looks like now? Like that's, I feel like that's kind of weird to do, so I never did it. But I talked about it a lot tonight, so 
<laughs> Maybe next time I'll just do it. I'll knock on the door and check it out. You did that? That's cool. I would be weirded out if someone did that at my house. You know, I'd be like, I don't know, did you really? You know, it's a little weird. I don't know, you're not just casing my house, you know? I don't know, that's where my head goes. <laughs> that helps, okay, that's good. Everyone knows Bob. They'll take a selfie with Bob and then they'll, they'll let you in. I think that's how you do it. It's the goal. All right, we're going to go next to Michael Massey. Middle here. <laughs> Michael Massey, front stretch. I know you told us yesterday, you know, you don't really like the whole even near Joey thing, but you know the more you win and the deeper you go in these playoffs, you're going to further that narrative, right? I'm okay with it. I mean, it just it's I just don't believe in in luck ever. Um or, or just weird things like that. I mean, I think it's just a coincidence. It's like that. Um, I hope, it's, I don't know, I always say, I hope it's right this year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Um, but, you know, it doesn't just come automatic because that's what the numbers have been and the pattern it, that's been uh, shown over the last, you know, whatever it's been, 10 years. Um, it's just, I don't know. I hope it's right, though. <laughs> and then, um, you know, Blaney got in that wreck earlier. And were you worried at all that, like, with him lining up behind you, that, I mean, he gave you a really good push, but were you worried at all that like maybe he wouldn't be able to get to you because he had a little damage, or was there no concern at all? About that? Um, it, I didn't have any concerns because he drove through the whole field That's back true. through there, right? Like it, it's, uh, you know, we were sitting there fourth, kind of saving fuel a little bit, and he just kept squeaking through the middle, and next thing you know, he was right behind me, so... I wasn't concerned about his speed or handling at that point. That thing was, she was ripping. Uh, it seemed like he can put it wherever he wanted to put it. All right, and we'll close with Jeff Gluck. <laughs> Are we all going up there together? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> we heard mixed things after the race from guys saying, you know, that the track looks grayer than even in the spring or that, like, maybe it has aged more. Um, what, what do you think? Like, is is it is it already wearing out? Is it going to get to the point where maybe they have to take the the plates off, so to speak, at, at some point? Well, we're a long ways from that, um, and I don't know if we ever will because the banking they added here is just ridiculous. I mean, there's so much banking around this place now. Um, I, I don't think we're close to being able to take the plates off or go into the other package yet, um, and I'm sure they're not even thinking about it because the racing's seems to be pretty in entertaining, right? So I would assume it's going to stay this way, but it definitely will affect the decision-making process as the track wears. This is the, the speedway that you have to weigh out um, mechanical grip, downforce versus drag, you know, um, all those type of those things that you have to kind of make those right decisions more, whereas, you know, Daytona Talladega is more just geared to making your car go fast in a straight line. Um, so this place has is, is got a little bit of both and, and makes it a little challenging. But and, and as it wears out, yeah, it's going to go more towards the best handling cars will, will win. Um, and even today, I mean, as much as we lift, the best handling cars end up up there. So is it a leap or is it fair to say that this is, has characteristics of old Daytona? Yeah, it's just like it. Okay. It, it's a lot like old Daytona without the, the huge swells in the middle of the corner like it used to have there. Uh, and the tire fall off, right? That, that's what Daytona used to have, but it's more like the old Daytona than the new Daytona is right now. Okay, thank you. Yep. Joey, congratulations, and thanks for coming in. All right, thanks, guys. All right, there's the checkered flag. Great job, driver.